Hello everyone. In the previous session, we talked about uh, data binding and also aggregation data binding. So we have the application that runs something like this. Uh, it shows my info. There is some element binding and there is some aggregation binding right here. Uh, so today, uh, what I want to talk about is I want to take a small break and talk about Git and how to store the source code. Um, so what you can do is you can run this application in SAP Cloud Platform. So you can give this URL to others uh, for them to run as well. Uh, so you can go right click on your application here. You can go deploy and deploy to SAP Cloud Platform. And this will allow you to deploy the application to the SAP Cloud Platform. Now what it also does behind the scenes is it creates a git repository for this application as well and what I want to show in this video is how we can use that as our source control uh, so this is going to deploy the application to the uh, SAP cloud platform so let me also pull up my SAP cloud platform here and let me go into account and what we want to do is we want to go to this uh, Git repository that we want to use. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit, you will see that there is the Neo trial. So that's where the Git repositories are there. Uh, so I'm assuming this sort of, OK. So let's uh, go to this uh, 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 Neo environment. And your application, once, it's, once it gets deployed, it will show up here. So right now, this is our application. It's still in the stopped state, uh, but it will get into the started state as well. Uh, but if you scroll down a little bit, so the HTML5 applications is where the application is hosted. But if you go down a little bit, you see that there is uh, Git repositories. Uh, so you will see that there is a Git repository in the name of data binding as well. So there is a new a git repository that got created you can use your own git repository if you want but uh, this is for convenience uh, there is already a git repository so you can use this so if you click on this git repository this gives you the git repository url so i'm going to hold on to this let me put it also in a notepad just in case i need it again so this is my git repository url and let's see if the application did start. No, it's still running. Uh, so it's built successfully. And you will see that you can now open the active version of the application. So this uh, this URL is uh, publicly accessible. And you can give this to others to use as, to uh, see your application as well. Uh, one thing we may want to do is we may want to go ahead and change uh, the authentication mechanism because right now this may ask for a username password so if you're going to give this url to someone it won't work so for that you can go into the neo-app.json file and here you can say authentication method so the authentication method you can add this property by default it is saml so that's why it'll prompt you for a username password but you can change this to none now this change has been made in your application but it has not yet been pushed to the sap cloud platform again so now you can deploy it one more time and this will be the next version of the app and once you deploy this, uh, so now this URL uh, you can give to others so they can access it. OK, so now the application is deployed without any authentication. Uh, so let's close this. Um, and what we are interested in now is uh, setting up the Git repository. So you can right click on the project, go into Git initialize local repository so it'll prompt you for your username password uh, or your username at here uh, say okay to that uh, so this is going to initialize your local repository and then you will get prompted uh, saying uh, hey your local repository was initialized uh, go ahead and set a remote so let's click on this button that says uh, set remote and we did copy over the remote repository. So this is the repository on the SAP Cloud Platform, the Git repository. And we can paste that repository URL here and say OK. Uh, and now we can use that as our source code. Say OK to this as well. 
Now, what I usually do is, uh, once it's once you get that fetch completed, also keep your view console up and running, so you can see the messages here. Uh, let's do a pull initially. So we'll do a pull first, and then what we will do is we will stage all our files that have been changed. Um, so these are all our initial files. We'll give it a comment, initial commit. And then go ahead and push this to the repository. Uh, so you can see that there is push request completed successfully. So now our source code is safe in that Git repository. So one other thing that I do is um, sometimes I don't like using the SAP Web IDE. I mean, it has enough cool features, but I also like using the Visual Studio Code. So because I like using Visual Studio Code, I can also do something like this. I can go into uh, a new folder. So I have a folder called Tutorials, and I can do git clone. Uh, make sure you have git installed on your uh, uh, local machine. And then paste in that remote URL. Uh, so now that we have pushed all the code to the remote uh, URL, uh, so we should be able to clone it. So this is going to clone the application to your local machine. Uh, so it's done. So your local machine now has the application. So you want to go CD data binding. So that's the name of the application. So go in here. And I like my favorite uh, editor is Visual Studio Code, so I can open Visual Studio Code by code space dot, and this will open up my Visual Studio Code with that application. Now the application itself, uh, the index.html file resides in this web app folder, uh, so make sure that you're not running it from the root. So web app folder contains the index.html, and I also have live server installed on my machine. So open up the index.html file from the web app folder, and then you can click on go live. And this should open up the index.html file, and you should be able to see the, okay. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is you would want to make sure that the index.html file has the complete path to the SAP core. So otherwise, you it won't work like this. Uh, so just make sure that it's not pointing to a relative path, uh, but make sure that you put the complete path for the uh, res uh, for the SAP UI5. Uh, so now let's go ahead and let's uh, close this and go live again. And hopefully this time it should show up the application. So it does show up the application now. Uh, so this is one way of running it in Visual Studio Code. Now you can make changes uh, in your uh, files here, and you should be able to uh, uh, push it to the re uh, remote repository as well. Uh, one other thing I do is I go into extensions. Uh, these are not really full-fledged support, but I can search for SAP UI 5 extensions. Uh, there is an extensions here that I've already installed. This gives me some kind of code completion and stuff like that. Uh, so I like this, so just go ahead and install this as well. So if you haven't installed it, just uh, go ahead and install it. And let's see, let's make some changes so we can push it to the remote repository. Uh, one thing that I do want to tell you is uh, make sure you're making changes in only one portion of the, like in only one, in one way. Like don't keep making changes in the browser and then make changes in the Visual Studio Code also. Uh, it's going to lead the, to a lot of problems later on, uh, especially with merging and stuff like that. Uh, so instead of a tiny margin top, I can also say let's also have a, uh, SAP UI tiny margin and as well. Now my Visual Studio code is set for auto save, and what you'll notice that it this portion of the Visual Studio code will automatically refresh for you. So that's the thing that I like about it is I can keep this running here like something like this. And then I can have my Visual Studio code itself running here. Uh, let's say I can keep it running something like this. 
and I can keep making changes and I can see how it behaves. Uh, so, uh, so this is one cool way and then once you've made changes what you can do is uh, you can go into the console, the terminal here. Uh, so you want to make sure you push this to your GitHub. So uh, you can run git, uh, git commit dash a dash m changes from Visual Studio code. And then you can git push origin master. And then you can change, uh, and you can s submit these changes as well. Okay, so that's it for this session. Uh, see you in the next session.